In 1981, Space Shuttle Columbia was the first shuttle launched into orbit, and it returned there again and again over the next 22 years. But on February 1st, what seemed to be another successful mission came to an abrupt end. Columbia broke up and fell to Earth, claiming the lives of all seven astronauts on board. Questions are being asked about what went wrong and if the disaster could have been averted. Yet the fact remains, the space shuttle program revolutionized how we send humans to space. Now, a look back at the development of the space shuttle on Modern Marvels. The space shuttle. It is the most complex machine ever built by man. A triumph of human ingenuity and a testament to the commitment to continued space exploration. Hi. I'm Story Musgrave. I'm standing at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Launching pad for every major U.S. space mission in the last five decades and an epicenter of the NASA space program. Being the only astronaut to have flown on all five shuttles, I can personally attest to their unique power and beauty. Join me now as we explore mankind's first attempt at a reusable spaceship on modern marvels. Space Shuttle, next on Space Week. Throughout history, the wondrous appeal of flight has held a firm grip on man's imagination. There are those who have attempted to approximate wings and let their spirit soar. These early efforts were resounding failures. Yet in the first half of the 20th century, a fearless generation of amateur inventors tried to master the challenge of flight. In 1903, two brothers tinkering in the back of their bicycle repair shop strapped a 12 horsepower engine on a simple glider and achieved sustained powered flight. Orville Wright's first voyage lasted only 12 seconds, spanning a mere 120 feet shorter than the wingspan of most modern commercial planes. But together, the Wright brothers lifted the world's perception of the possible and cracked open the skies. But while the public applauded the accomplishments of aviation's first heroes, scientists were already making important discoveries which would change the nature of powered flight and propel the world into an uncertain future. March 16, 1926, more than a year before Lindbergh's solo flight across the Atlantic, Dr. Robert Goddard designs, builds, and fires the world's first liquid-fueled rocket in the desert of Roswell, New Mexico. These rare home movies illustrate the early potential of his revolutionary new concept a fundamentally different approach to propulsion with an internal combustion engine that isn't based on a mechanical model. Dr. Goddard based his work on careful calculations but often alienated his peers by suggesting that rockets would make a trip to the moon a reality. At his Roswell test site in the 1930s, Goddard and his staff built and tested a rocket a month. They came in all shapes and sizes, carrying scientific equipment and rising from the desert floor at speeds up to 600 miles per hour. Goddard's home movies also reveal another space age innovation, recovery by parachute. Few Americans realized the implications of Goddard's work and his rocket research was greatly ignored. But in Nazi Germany during the 1930s, scientists like Werner von Braun devoured Goddard's theories and gave the rocket its first practical application, the V-2 bomb. Constructed in exactly the same manner as Dr. Goddard's New Mexico rockets, the V-2s delivered explosive death to the British, destroying homes, businesses, great cathedrals, and the civilians inside. After the war, German scientists were interrogated about the design of their missiles. Why are you asking us, they replied. Why don't you ask your own rocket pioneer, Dr. Goddard? We learn these things from him. Unfortunately, Dr. Goddard had died in August of 1945, just as the world was reeling from an explosive new future shock. 
rockets facilitated the nuclear age. After all, if a nation were to use such a destructive weapon, it would be important to pull the trigger from very far away. Rockets give warriors a comfortable distance from the destruction they unleash. But in the Cold War years that followed, the United States and the Soviet Union competed to be able to put a far more innovative payload into a missile. And the race to lay claim to outer space began. In 1954, white mice were sealed in a rocket nose cone for an experimental flight. This was the first physical evidence that living organisms could survive in a zero-gravity environment. Meanwhile, on Earth, John Paul Stapp rides a rocket sled at supersonic speeds to see if the human body can withstand the grueling effects of spaceflight. His face reflecting the strain, Stapp is subjected to pressure 35 times his own weight as his sled is braked to a stop. But while the United States set an agenda of controlled scientific advancement, Russia leaps ahead with an astounding demonstration of bravado. October 4th, 1957, the world listens to the faint chirp of Sputnik 1, the first man-made satellite circling the globe every 90 minutes, and the race escalates. In America, a chimpanzee named Ham is wired with delicate electronic sensors, then packed in a rocket and blasted 150 miles into the stratosphere. Minutes later, he's recovered by Navy helicopters in the Atlantic, 450 miles from the launch site. Russia responds with Laika, a puppy sent into complete Earth orbit aboard Sputnik 2. Unlike the American chimp, Laika was allowed to burn up upon re-entry. In 1959, America recruits military test pilots as future astronauts, but before their training is complete, Russia scores again. April 1961, Moscow and the world hail Yuri Gagarin after the Russian cosmonaut becomes the first human being to orbit the Earth. America must respond. And President Kennedy charts the course. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. One, zero, ignition. February 1962, John Glenn orbits the earth and America holds its breath as a new frontier beacons the nation towards unknown worlds. Friendship 7, I can see clear back a big cloud pattern way back across toward the Cape. Beautiful sight. Not all rockets work to perfection, but while NASA understood that progress is built on failure as much as success, the Soviet Union seemed to flaunt its impressive string of accomplishments, including the first woman in space. Valentina Tereshkova, who orbited the globe in June of 1963. NASA called her a Soviet Barbie doll who was only along for the ride. But a Russian space agency official boasted that she was a brilliant star in the cosmic firmament. Never before and in no country did women ever obtain such height. It would be another 20 years before the first American woman would experience outer space. The dark mysteries of the cosmos and the extraordinary perspective of Earth from orbit seem to offer another motivation for the American space program that transcended the technical rivalries of two Earth-bound superpowers. 
Suddenly, the world began to realize that the immediate goal of landing on the moon was part of a more profound journey for humankind. When two men walked on the lunar surface, so did we all. When humankind claimed the moon in 1969, the Earth was a landscape of war and epic social revolution.